Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, we finally got to see Dylan Radens play left tackle for the Titans. How did he do? I'll discuss. Then, the Titans injury issues could potentially be part of a concerning larger trend for the organization. I'll explain. And then finally, I'll tell you why talent and coaching doesn't really matter with the current state of the Titans roster. All of that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in your app store. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo LOCKED ON in all caps in the game store. Thanks for making Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every single day. Remember, I am putting out Monday through Friday. Tennessee Titans content on all platforms all year round again for free. So make sure that you stay locked into the Locked On Titans podcast. Subscribe on whatever platform you do stream on YouTube. Make sure you hit the notification bell and throw a thumbs up on the video right now. I do appreciate the support, but let's dive into the performance from Dylan Radens. And look, guys, I'm going to be upfront and honest with you here. The Titans haven't won a game. In 32 days, I got some rants, all right? I got some things to get off my chest. I'm sure you guys feel the same. Number one, how in the world did Mike Vrabel not play Dylan Radins at left tackle earlier this season? Dylan Radins was out there, and yes, Radins got hurt during the game. He got hurt, wasn't able to play the entire time. But in the small stint that we saw him out there. It's hard to argue that he wasn't obviously an improvement over Dennis Daly. It's just obvious. So Dylan Radins was out there for 15 snaps, 10 pass blocking snaps, five run blocking snaps. His pass blocking grade was an 83.2. Zero sacks. Zero pressures allowed. I I mean, now, uh, fine. Let's look at Dylan Radins throughout the entire season. Throughout the entire season. As a pass blocker, he's allowed, what, zero sacks, five pressures, and 146 pass blocking snaps. Five pressures. 146! At two different positions. Now, let's look at Dennis Daly. 12 sacks allowed. 43 pressures. And 400 snaps. So he's got 250 more snaps than Raiden's. But 12 more sacks. His pass blocking grade on the year is a 45.1 compared to Raiden's 78.1. And look, other than Corey Levin, LaRaven Clark, and Taylor Lewan, Raiden's has the highest pass blocking grade on the team. How has this man not been able to be in the lineup when the Titans are getting smoked in pass protection every single week with the worst starting left tackle in the past decade in the NFL? The highest. Sack per snap tackle in the NFL that has started in the past 10 years. Like, if Dennis Daly was a young prospect, a young guy who the Titans were hoping would turn into a player, let's say he was a second round pick from 2021. And he was a young player, and it was like, you know, maybe he's not the best tackle, but him playing is better for the long term. 
We're going to see what kind of player we got in Dennis Daly. If that made sense, then I would get it. But it's the opposite. Dylan Radins is the young prospect. Dylan Radins is the guy who was the second round pick who you're getting nothing out of while he sits on the bench while the worst starting left tackle of the past decade is out there killing your offense on a week-to-week basis. How in the world did it take this long? And then, of course, as I mentioned on yesterday's show, because we're Titans fans, Raidens plays well at left tackle and then immediately gets hurt, of course, because we can't have nice things. But I hear, I can hear in the faint distance, I can hear the haters saying, oh, well, he's a terrible run blocker. That's why they don't have him in, because he's a terrible run blocker. Okay, you know what? That's fair. Raidens isn't a great run blocker right now. He doesn't have great balance. He doesn't have great drive. He doesn't have a great punch. I get that. I truly do. His run blocking rating this year is 39.7. It's the worst on the team. No doubt. But you know who is a few spots up at a 52.1? Dennis Daly. The only other people between Raidens and Daly is LaRaven Clark, who's played nine run blocking snaps all year, and Austin Hooper, who's a terrible blocker, and we know that. He's he's just a better version of Anthony Ferkser right now, basically. We know that role. So you're telling me that the only difference between Dennis Daly and Dylan Raidens, the only thing that's separating them is LaRaven Clark? What are we doing? Okay. Dylan Radins is miles better in pass protection than Dennis Daly. Dennis Daly is a little bit better than Dylan Radins in run blocking. Then you add in the fact that Dylan Radins is, again, your second round pick. Guys, I say all this to say. This is going to be a common theme. Mike Vrabel, while being a good coach, and we all agree he is a very good coach. I think he's a top 10 coach. He's not without a blind spot. He's not without weaknesses. And the fact that he trotted out Dennis Daly all season, we could be mad at Todd Downing. We could be mad at the roster. We could be mad at whatever we want. But Mike Vrabel decided to play Dennis Daly over Dylan Radins at left tackle all season long. And I I don't know how to rationalize that with who I think Mike Vrabel is as a coach. It's, it's, It's beyond me. And it just proves that while we may not be NFL head coaches and Mike Vrabel has forgotten more about football than I will ever know, I admit that. Sometimes the fans are right and the coach is the one being a stubborn idiot. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes when GMs or coaches make decisions and the fans are like, whoa, this is an obvious bad decision. Sometimes there isn't some magical reason why the coach did it and the fans are all dumb. Sometimes the coach is dumb. And I don't have to be a professional chef to know when my steak is overcooked. I don't have to be a professional mechanic to know when my brakes are out. And I don't have to be an NFL head coach to know that you should be playing Dylan Radins over Dennis Daly. With that being said, we got to talk about the Titans injury issue and how it might be part of, of a more concerning larger trend for the organization that it does have me a bit worried. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. Before we do, though, that today's show is brought to you by the Ultimate Pro Football GM app, guys. This thing is fantastic. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and actually managing a football franchise like it is in real life, your dreams have come true, and this game is definitely for you. You literally manage every strategic aspect of the team, hiring the right coaches, the coordinators, the scouts, the training staff, trading players, making draft picks, uh, salary cap management, contract management. It's absolutely fantastic. You play the games going throughout weeks. You can set up different formations and organize your team exactly how you want. It's challenging. It's realistic. It's absolutely fantastic. Once again, it's the ultimate football GM app. It's completely free. You can play it offline, play on the go as you want, 
when you want. I've been playing it for the last few days. I created a team, the Dayton Dragons, baby. I'm out here trying to win the championship. And it's cool because we're in like a special league where I get to compete against the other locked on NFL hosts for the other teams. Uh, trash talk them a little bit. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's something that you guys could do with your friends all year long as well. I absolutely love it. So Locked On Titans listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when you use the promo code Locked On in all caps in your game store. That's Locked On in all caps. Make sure that you guys check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app store. It's the easiest way to do it. Ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. Also, do want to tell you guys about Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. They have a bunch of different vehicles all over the U.S., the U.K., Canada, and Australia from a ton of different hosts. Basically, you go on there, browse their selection of vehicles, get a spacious SUV for your family road trip. You get like a luxury car for your birthday or a special event. It's a great way also to test drive an electric vehicle that you've had your eye on just to see how it fits your everyday life. Make sure that you guys check out Turo right now. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms and conditions and exclusions do apply. Forget your boring rental car. Find your drive at Turo.com. Titans fans, we are going to continue today's show. I'm calling it a a Talk It Out Tuesday because that's what we're doing. We just talked about the left tackle position and how it's truly malpractice from Mike Grable that he's been playing Dennis Daly over Dylan Radins the entire season. But now I want to talk about something that's more of a big picture organizational issue that has to do with the injuries. Before we get into it, I want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast. Your first listen every day. Tomorrow, we're back to rewatch Wednesday. Going to be breaking down the tape with you guys. Then Thursday, crossover Thursday, we're going to be talking to our guys from Locked On Texans. Once again, totally different ballgame. And Friday will be the game plan preview where I break down exactly how the Titans need to beat the Texans this weekend. But let's talk about this, this bigger issue. So the Titans have had historic injuries two years in a row. Two years running. And I am not someone, I'm too much uh, of a, I don't want to, how do I put this? Uh, I'm a pragmatist. I, I, I'm very pragmatic in my analysis. I, I, I try to be realistic, uh, be solution-based, quite frankly, is how I try to do things, not just on the show, but in my life. I try to be very logical about stuff, maybe to the point of, not maybe, definitely to the point of being a pessimist. but. If you've had injuries that are at a historic rate two years in a row, it's only fair at some point to question what the team is doing about that and why you've had historic injuries two years in a row. That's a pattern. That's a trend. And my brain will not allow me to ignore that and and just push that away. No, Don't worry about that. I, I can't just push that away and ignore it. If there's a trend like that, a historically bad trend, action must be taken, changes must be made, because doing the exact same thing for a third year in a row is insanity. Now, as I've said, anytime this topic has been brought up at any point in time throughout the season on the show, I have always said, I'm not a doctor. If a physical trainer or something like that was doing something wrong that wasn't like blatantly obvious, I wouldn't know, okay? So I don't come to you from a place of I have knowledge and I have this expertise that I want to point out these mistakes like I would normally do when we talk about football. But I come to you just as a logical person. And I say, if you have two seasons of back-to-back historic injuries, something about your process is probably wrong. Now, credit to Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel talked about this And this was his response when he was asked if he's changed anything on the injury front, 
what they've done. But well, this is what Vrabel said. I, I, he deserves to have his say here. Quote, we've changed a lot. Yeah, we have. Training camp has been different. We track all the injuries. We track how they occur. Some guys are repeat offenders. Put a bullet in that phrase, repeat offenders. Some injuries occur in the game. Try to limit the ones that occur in practice, obviously. But we were very conscious of training camp schedule, practice schedule. I talked earlier about how we've done research to try to get guys to 90% each week and every week so that it's not just once a week on Sunday. Sometimes Wednesday or Thursday, the director of sports performance, Frank Carano, will walk around with his iPad, track guys, and say, hey, I need to get you to 90%. So they'll manufacture some sort of stride so it's not just they hit 90% on Sundays, wait a week, and then all of a sudden hit 90%. So we're focusing on some of those things. Some guys are repeat offenders that have been showing up there more than once on some things that are maybe similar or maybe the same injury. Are you? Uh, and, and look, the question is, are you surprised, given those changes, that you're in the same spot you were last year? Vrabel says, quote, it's where we're at right now. We'll continue to evaluate and try to get everybody as healthy as we can. So look, you give Vrabel credit there. He says they changed some things going into training camp, but changing your process, changing your procedure, when we think about the medical staff and strength and conditioning, we think about the people in charge. I want to bring up another thing, analytics. So it's been shown multiple years in a row now, Seth Waldron from ESPN does a report every year on the size and capacity of different teams' analytics department. The Titans are always last. If not last, they're second to last. Apparently, they hired one person over the offseason to look at some data. Historically, Kevin Clark and I from The Ringer discussed on Twitter, John Robinson said to him at the draft one, or at the combine one time, I am the analytics department. That's what John Robinson said about the Titans' analytics department. I am the analytics department. That's the type of cockiness and brashness and machismo that the Titans organization is operating with when it comes to these processes. So my question then becomes, if the Titans are way behind the rest of the NFL in analytics, if the Titans are way behind and way less advanced than other NFL teams in the analytics department, when data has become such a big part of the football process. Is it possible, and one would say even logical, that the Titans are lagging behind in other areas? And look, I don't just mean the strength and conditioning staff, the medical staff. I don't just mean the people. What about the technology? What about the methods they're using? The Titans have been an archaic football franchise my entire life. They play old school football. They have never modernized their philosophy on the field. They never modernized their philosophy in the analytics department. Is it possible that they have never modernized themselves in the sports science field, in the scouting department, and that's why we get these first round busts? Why were the Titans so impacted scouting-wise by COVID? Is because their scouting process is antiquated. It's archaic. It's old-fashioned. Are the Titans still operating as a 1990s team or an early 2000s team when the rest of the NFL is in the 2020s? They don't respect analytics. Is that the case with sports medicine, sports science, recovery, training? So maybe it's not the people. Maybe it's not the physical trainer. Maybe it's not the doctor, maybe it's not the strength and conditioning coach. Maybe it's an organizational philosophy that refuses to modernize to what current NFL standards are, not only on the field, but off it as well. It's possible that the injury issue is a symptom of a larger virus. The Titans have never modernized as a franchise on the field, in the analytics department. It is not insane to think that maybe they have never modernized off it. If you're a Titans fan and you're sitting there wondering whether this team is is advanced enough 
to truly compete for a Super Bowl in the 2020s, I understand your concern. I really do, because I'm concerned about it as well. But with that being said, we got to talk about where the Titans go from here, what they should do with the rest of the season. It sucks that every single week after another loss, we have to have another conversation like this, but it's just where the Titans are at right now. Before we get into that, do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made simple. Prize Picks has a projection for every player Derrick Henry, 100 rushing yards, Pat Mahomes, 300 passing yards, Justin Jefferson, two touchdown catches. All you do is you pick two to five players, you look at their projection, and you say whether that player is going to do more or less than what the projection is. If you get all your players' guesses right, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. And right now, if you go to prizepicks.com or you download the Prize Picks app, you sign up using the promo code Locked On, you're going to get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 if you're a first time user. Once again, use the promo code Locked On on the Prize Picks app for a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Titans fans, let's cap off today's uh, Talk About It Tuesday or Talk It Out Tuesday, I think is what we were rolling with. Uh, we, we we discussed a lot. Dylan Radin's opportunities at left tackle, how he performed before he got hurt. Then we talked about the injury issues, the analytics issues, what it all means as a larger trend for the organization. Now just want to cap things off by talking about where the Titans are at right now, where they need to go. <sighs> Before we get into it, do want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. As for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get analysis and opinions uh, before anyone else from local and national experts and insiders. Locked On Sports Today podcast available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. The coaching and the talent on the roster don't matter if the Titans are this injured. Todd Downing, the offensive tackle position, the wide receiver position, the cornerback position, none of this crap matters if the Titans' best players are just going to be hurt. We get mad. We've gotten mad the last two weeks at least. When the Titans lose, one game it was ugly, one game it wasn't. And we're all looking for, hey, do this better, do that better, Todd Downing, Dennis Day, and I get it, we got to. But the reality here is, if the Titans are going to be missing double-digit starters to injury, they're not going to win. They're not going to be good. So I said this earlier today on Twitter. When the Titans, look, we all got drunk one day in Green Bay. I have people say to me, oh, you said they're a Super Bowl contender after Green Bay. We all got drunk. One night in Green Bay, all right? Give me a break. <laughs> Excuse me. But while the Titans were, were, while the getting was good and the Titans were on a huge win streak, people were saying I was too pessimistic because I was saying, I don't think this is a very good team. I don't think it's a great team. This team isn't top of the AFC up there with the Super Bowl contenders. This team isn't that. And people were mad because I was being pessimistic and they were on a run. But people are mad at me now, too, because I'm just not as pessimistic about the team and what its current state is. I think we know the truth now. This is not a great team. This is not a bad team either, though. The Titans are a good team that is decimated with injuries. I mean decimated. Landry. Autry. Tart was a healthy scratch because he was having a baby. Three starters on the defensive line. Right there. David Long, Zach Cunningham, two starters at linebacker, Elijah Molden, Christian Fulton, Amani Hooker. I mean, right there, I just named what three, three, two, eight starters on defense. The backups, backups are getting hurt. Dylan Cole got hurt. Jack Gibbons is in. 
Terrence Mitchell got hurt. Greg Maben's in. Andrew Adams went out for a little bit. That's just defense. No Nate Davis. No Taylor Lewan. We forget Lewan, Lewan and Landry. No Nate Davis. No Dylan Raidens even. No Lewan. No Traylon Burks. No Kyle Phillips. You could say Kyle Phillips is the starting slot receiver. Burks is definitely a starter on this team. And then two on the offensive line. That's four. So, I mean, we're talking about 12 starters gone. Guys, I know it sucks, but like, this team is not a bad team, but you could assemble a Hall of Fame roster. If any other team in the NFL had these kind of injuries, they wouldn't be as look as good as they do right now. The Jags look great. They're catching up on the Titans. They are the least injured team in the NFL this year. They just had their left tackle tear an ACL, and he's out for the season, though. So, Cam Robinson. But the Titans had that happen in week one. And no one's making excuses for them. I'm about to be injured and on the IR to hear this call. God. So I guess really all, all I want to say is, and it kind of goes back to the second segment. The Titans can fix the roster. The Titans can fire Todd Downing. The Titans can do whatever you think. Whatever you think the Titans need to do to get better right now. The Titans can do that. They can do it successfully. But if they don't find a way to have less than historic injuries next year, nothing's going to change. Because you can't win in the NFL with backups, backups, backups. We watch the preseason, and we're like, oh, this sucks. These guys suck. Those guys are the guys that are playing for the Titans. And yet, some of you guys get in here and tell me that they're a terrible team and they're bad. They're not. But what I want to say is this. This is what I want to wrap up with. What what they should do next. If, if Mike Vrabel, Mike Vrabel said in his press conference, they're not resting players to try to play for it all against Jacksonville in the last week. But if he doesn't think Danico Autry's coming back, if he doesn't think Christian Fulton's coming back, if he doesn't think that David Long is going to be the last guy activated off IR, if he doesn't think Burks is going to come back from the concussion, if Nate Davis is now out for the rest of the season, if all of these things are true, then you got to shut it down. I don't want that to be the case. I don't think they should do that if they expect these guys to return. But if the guys I just mentioned are not expected to be back before the end of the season, Autry, Fulton, Long, Burks, Nate Davis, If these guys aren't going to be back for the next three weeks, then like Kevin Byard said, I'm not interested in just getting a uh, a courtesy entry into the playoffs. I think the Titans can win one playoff game, their opening round playoff game. I think they could win that game, four versus five seed, if they win the division. I think they could win their opening round game. But they can't do it. Without those guys, without the Amani Hooker, like if they don't get these guys back, then it doesn't matter anyway. So if those guys aren't going to be back by the end of the season, if those guys wouldn't be available for the playoff game anyways, then yeah, my mind totally changes. And only Vrabel knows that. Only the staff knows how long those guys are expected to be out. But if if most of those guys aren't coming back until the end of the year, then they have no shot to win that playoff game anyway, so why even make the playoffs at that point? So, I can't know the answer, but depending on the timeline of the best players on the Titans, especially on defense, if those guys aren't coming back this year, then you have a a duty (laughs) to your organization to find a way to get the best draft pick possible. But I think, I think, that a lot of those guys will be back by the end of the year. The Titans will get healthy, healthier, I will say. Burks will be back, which will make a big difference. The Titans will beat Jacksonville in Week 18, go to the playoffs, and win their first playoff game. I'm sticking to that for right now. Until I know that those guys will be out and not come back for the rest of the year, I'm sticking to that. So, 
Yes, there we are. Anyways, that'll do it for me today, folks. It is Christmas week. Obviously, I'm in the spirit. Hope you all are as well. That'll do it for me today. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.